Hi, I'm Steve Clatton. Welcome to another in our Valuation 101 series. What we're going to look at today is some other EV-based valuation measures, and particularly EV sales, which is one of my favorites. So in the last video, we talked about EV to EBITDA, and we said that there that EV to EBIT in some ways is better than EV EBITDA because it takes into account the capital intensity of the business. It's less widely used, but I think it should be used more often than it actually is. EV to capital employed is a measure which you may see. This effectively is the equivalent of price to book. But what it does is it takes into account the, the capital structure. It takes into account the amount of debt you have. So rather than using price to book and return on equity, you might be better to use EV to capital employed and combine that with the return on capital employed. And that's something that I like to do, especially if you've got a company where it's got an asset intensive business. EV to no PAT is a very popular measure. And this effectively is it's the same as a PE, but again, it's taking the capital structure out of the equation. It's slightly more complicated to calculate. It's a very useful tool, especially if you're comparing two companies with different capital structures. And the NOPAT is it's a popular term. People get a bit nervous about it, but it's actually quite simple to calculate. It's simply the operating profit of the business, or the EBIT, and you take off the tax. So you take the company's tax rate and apply that to the operating profit, and that gives you the NOPAT. But my favorite one is EV to sales. And the reason that I think this is such a great valuation tool is the sales number rarely lies. Yes, companies can be aggressive in their accounting. They can fabricate sales or they can bring forward sales. But out, apart from an outright fraud, the sales number tends to lie less than the earnings, put it that way. It's also a really big number. So what you've got here is you've got the enterprise value, the sales number, and this, because the sales number is quite a large number, the EV to sales tends to be quite a low multiple, and it tends to trade in quite a narrow range. And that's why I like it, because it's a more stable measure, much, much, much more stable than an earnings-based measure or an EBITDA-based measure, especially for cyclical companies. So if you're looking at a cyclical company, Looking at the EV to sales gives you a much better feeling for where the valuation lies within its long-term range. And it's not influenced by how much money you're making today. Any earnings-based measure is influenced by what are the margins today. So if you're making much better margins than normal, the stock will look, up, look will appear very cheap. But if you use EV to sales, you get a much better perspective of where that valuation really lies. And obviously, if you've got a company that's a loss maker or a fast growing company, EV to sales is also really, really useful. If you can use the EV sales relative to the market, I find that really enhances the tool because I find that's been a fantastically reliable predictor of both tops and bottoms for cyclical stocks. Often used by automotive analysts, airline analysts a bit, but less so, but again, the absolute ranges for EV to sales are pretty reliable for those industries, much more so than the earnings based measures. And let me just give you a practical example of why I think this is useful and, and how you can use it. Um, this is, um, I mean, the example is a few years old, but Amazon was trading a really modest valuation on EV to sales, but its sales are growing really, really quickly. And back in 2014, 2015, I projected that Amazon's EV to sales would be at a discount to the US market in two years time. And the table that I'm just gonna show you compares the valuation of Amazon and Walmart. And just to note, the EV calculations that I've done in here have been very simplified. But what I've shown you in this table is Amazon and Walmart and the relative, and obviously, on PE or EV EBITDA based measures, Amazon was trading at huge multiples of Walmart, particularly in the case of PE. 
EV EBITDA, not quite as extreme, but you can see that it was trading on 37 times EBITDA and Walmart was trading on seven times. On PE, it was trading on 131 times and Walmart was trading on 14. So it's nearly 10 times the multiple. When you looked at it on EV to sales, it was 4.8 times. It was at 2.5 times and Walmart was at 0.5 times. And its margin, well, its margin really wasn't very good back then. It was only 0.9%. This is before AWS really started to kick in and drive the business forward. But you can see what was really extreme here was that Amazon's five-year sales growth was 160%. Walmart's was 15%. 10 times the sales growth. So if you then project forward a few years, you can see that EV to sales at Amazon was going to shrink right down and actually would have got below a market average if the share price hadn't gone up. And that was a big trigger for me, combined with an inflection in the gross margin. That was a big trigger for me in getting very enthusiastic about Amazon on a valuation basis. So Amazon looked expensive on earnings-based valuations. Walmart had grown its sales at 15% in the previous five years versus over 10 times as fast as Amazon. The margin picture had been distorted by the development of the AWS. And I projected that Amazon's EV to sales would fall below the US market in the following 18 months. If you believe that Amazon would never make a profit, that would have made sense. But if Amazon had potential to be a more profitable business than a conventional retailer, or indeed than the average US quoted stock, that made no sense at all. Or even if it was going to be less profitable, if it was going to continue growing faster, it wouldn't have made any sense. So EV to sales, that was a quick snapshot of one application that I've used in the past. EV to sales is a super powerful measure in my view, and it's really worth looking at. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and watch out for future videos in this series.